Well, it's a cold and windy and rainy day, so I'm not going to get to finish my wells out there today. But uh, welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. We appreciate you coming along for the ride. We are tuning our sail rig so that we can uh, do some more sailing. We've sailed a few days out there and learned some things we want to change. Now we're changing those and it's coming along well. In this video I managed to resheat that forward sail and build that sail crutch out there and also modify those tulip shoes. On Patreon we're doing something special. The video you're getting ready to watch is 10 minutes long. There's a 30 minute long version of it with a lot more detail over on Patreon that's only for patrons. And so if you would like more content, go to Patreon and watch that video there. And you need to be a $5 patron in the future to see those videos. Right now you can just be a $1 patron and you still see them. And I'm trying this as an experiment, but it may be something I keep doing because what I do when I edit video is I put it all together and I make this really a long thing and then I go through and I start throwing stuff away. Well, I'm throwing less of it away and trying to make a long video, put that out on Patreon, and then uh, I can shorten it on down to this 10 minute video. So here you go. Oh, such a pretty weld. It's a shame to cut it, but it needs to be done. What I'm doing is I'm moving this crutch. This crutch normally holds this sail bundle up a little bit so it can be tied down and secured. But I put it in the center of the boat and it really doesn't go in the center. It goes off to that side where their sail bundle is because the forward sail bundle is off to the port and this needs to be off the port. So I'm moving it over. It's down now. Oh, damn thing's heavier than I thought it'd be. <laughs> also be careful not to step on that line it goes to the horn now the reason why I just love metal boats if you don't like where it is cut it off weld it on somewhere else no big deal so I wanted to go right there but it's angling up too much I need to put longer tabs so it's further down and I can notch this bar a little bit I can bring it down a little bit but I can't bring it out too much because the sheets come back through here underneath those sheaves up there Feels good to have a grinder back in my hand. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's so this is wider so the sail can come down into it. It's a bigger target to hit, but still bunches it up. I think I got my polarity wrong. This TIG is reverse polarity. Oh yeah, there we go. So I had mentioned my, uh, my TIG welding here and it's being done by a scratch start a TIG welder, meaning that I have to touch the tungsten to the metal in order to ignite the arc. Now that's something you normally don't want to do because when the metal is molten, it'll just crawl right up that tungsten and then you got to take it over to the grinder and grind that off and sharpen the tip back up and get it good again. But in this case, the metal is not molten, so you touch it to hard metal. You just got to tip it to it. Some people actually scratch it and it ignites this thing. Well, allow me to demonstrate. Just turn the gas on first. Sometimes it'll stick. Sometimes you'll get it on the first go. There. The nice thing about scratch stars, you don't need any fancy electronics in the welding machine. You just need a, a common old DC welder and I'm using a uh, Miller Maxstar 150S. And it's not a very cheap welder but it is very compact and it runs off 110 volts so you can just carry it around and do anything anywhere as long as it's TIG or stick. Oh, good old stainless. You got to be careful drilling stainless. It will harden. You know, if your bit you're using is not pulling some metal off, stop using it. You don't want that to get hot. And so what I do is I step up, you know, a small hole and then grow that hole. That's a nicer way to get the hole the size you want without work hardening. I got one more size to go up now. Because once you work harden it, you are in a world of pain. It's a little windy out here for this, but if I can just get it tacked on. Okay, I'm not going to bother clamping this down. The tack starts with no filler rod. You can just melt the two metals together. That might have it. Yep, it does. It's a tiny little spot, but that's all you got to do to hold it together. Then you can come back and put some more filler in. And with the filler, I'll build it up so it's like that one. Oh yeah, I think that'll be great. So before Eric flew back to Europe, he came up with this design for a brace. It's 
don't like the way this sticks out because it end right here but you know another idea would be to have it hinged onto this pipe permanently attached you now we'll try that I'll just weld a bolt on there and it can uh, latch on the bolt and the head will keep it from going off to the side so I have an idea for a hinge on that thing I just also thought I was stronger than this too so yeah now it's gonna bend I just bend this right to the pipe He's a little tension relief right there. That works for me. And well, we'll fill in for the sins, so we'll just make a couple little straight cuts right there. Roll out the red carpet for the shavings. Now the other piece is just a tab for a bolt to go through, and I could use uh, something thin or something a little thicker, and I like going with the thicker. Thin, I can't ever make it rounded over, so that could go into your cranium pretty good. Whereas something thicker, I can uh, round it over a bit, and still, if you don't pay attention, it's blunt force trauma, but maybe we don't have to pull it back out of your skull. So I'll weld this onto the pipe, leaving a little bit to stick out, and then this will latch over it. You know what? I'm going to need something bigger than that. I need more latch area. Yeah, remember these? Okay. Don't fall. <laughs> we'll put a little bevel on this to make it easier to weld on. Okay. One half inch notch. I'm going to have to clean it up with a grinder, but it's almost there. close up the end of this pipe because any pipe left with an open end becomes a flute on a sailboat. Okay, not one of my better ones. That'll work. Just gonna blob it on and grind it off. Ah, not being patient, just gotta let it cool. Encourage it to cool. Oh, that's ugly. Let it cool, let it cool. Don't get the rush. Let's see if a grinder can bring some beauty back to that mess. Okay. There, that ain't too bad. Won't be a whistle. Won't put a hole in somebody's head. So get out in your shop and start welding. And start grinding. You'll get better at one of them. There we go. Yep, touched it. Now, nah, time to go to the grinder. Now I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on how to grind the tungsten and even gadgets that'll help you grind the tungsten into perfect shape. And I think it's all hogwash. You know, maybe if you weld as good as Jody over welding tips and tricks, you might see a difference. For me, I can get a beautiful weld sometimes. I can get a crappy weld and I do it with all the same tungsten. So I don't think there's anything to it. I hope I get the cat before I burn my finger. Getting awful warm. There I go. I think I got it. There we go. Now I got it. Smallest attacks in there. That'll do. I can use two hands now. Boy, look at that thing glow. Let's see if I can do any better on this one. Here we go. Confidence is low. <laughs> Set low standards and you're bound to meet them. Well, you know the old saying, practice makes uh, not quite as bad as last time. Well, at least it took a lot less grinding. All right, I got a clamp on there and it's precariously lashed to that. Wind has picked up even more, but maybe we can get a tack. <laughs> well, miracles do occur. <laughs> okay, now we wait for the wind to go away. We finish it. Got the perfect evening. I just need my glasses. My leg extender, too.
Yep. I think I may have gotten it. All right. This was going to flip over. Ouch! It's hot. <laughs> that way. And it has to clear the line coming from this sheaf going to that sheaf. But that sheaf is set way back so it doesn't clear that line. So my solution is to bring it back this way. And I put a piece of hose onto the railing here with a couple of zip ties holding it on. You can stick it inside that hose to hold on to it. I think that will work. Stand this up, slide that over, lock it in. That'll do. That'll do. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. A good test, see if I can do it alone. Oh yeah, I love it. It's about waiting for the right moment, you know, when it starts to come back around and just let it go. Sweet. Now the comment comes up a lot of like, am I going to damage the cell cloth because those, you know, those points on that uh, crutch, the cell cloth is going to pull across them. Now, you know, they're not sharp, they're rounded over, but they're still, you know, points. You wouldn't want to do that to normal lightweight Dacron cell cloth, but that's not what we're using. My, my red carpet here is a piece of cell cloth. I walk on it, I step on it with grindings all over it, and I repeatedly do that. This stuff is 11 ounce Top Gun. It's the same uh, fabric that's used on awnings out over the front of buildings. You know, you put a light behind it, it glows at night, it's real pretty. Sunbrella is another maker of it. It's uh, basically the same stuff. It's UV protected on both sides. It's basically a bi-directional cloth with plastic coated over both sides of it. So no stretch in either direction. And one of the steps while we we're making this thing is, yeah, this device. There's a whole video where you can see us making these sails. But this is literally a technique to uh, get a fold in this stuff. You take this awl or ice pick and press down as hard as you can and drag it along in a straight line. That's what it does. It kind of impresses into the plastic there. So now that makes it easier to fold that over and create a seam. So if that's part of the process of making your sails, I don't think you got a lot to worry about with this Top Gun material. And the odd thing too is that will uh, stretch back out and you'll hardly even see where that was. Well, that's the end of this video. I got welding to do down in the engine room. I'm sure you got something out in your shop too. I hope you get out there and get at it and send me a photo. Inspire me. Tell me to get off the couch. You know, it's, it's a hard thing for me to do too, but we can support each other in that. You know, it's, you feel good once you do it. Once you have something in your hand that you made, doesn't matter what it is. That's a, that's a good day. So have a good day. Send us a photo. What'd you make today?